In this video, I'm going to design a starter lever on this pretty sweet race bike model I downloaded. Now we're going to build the lever off of this boss that comes out of the motor. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate that motor part by right clicking on it and hitting activate. Activate just brings it into active memory. In a larger assembly, Solid Edge will deactivate all the parts to improve performance. Now you can set how Solid Edge responds to part activation in the options under assembly open as. You see in here you can define what a small, medium, or large assembly is in terms of part number and also set how Solid Edge opens it in terms of activating parts. So with that activated I'm going to go to the create in place command and if I select by graphic input that will put the origin for the new part on the, my cursor and I can actually reach up and snap it to key points like the front face of this boss. I can also from this menu set the material and with this edit in place option selected when I hit check mark to accept and give the part a new name it'll actually take me into that part environment and let me start designing. So if we look over at the pathfinder on the left you're gonna see that we are still in the assembly but the lever part which now shows up at the bottom has been highlighted and it shows that we are actively editing that part. So we're inside that part but still within the assembly. You can hide the top level assembly under the view tab with the hide previous level command. I use this command so much that I've put it up here on my quick access toolbar. So let's start with the extrude command and the reason I'm using the extrude command is because in synchronous modeling which is the environment we're in right now you can actually click on a face and create a protrusion or an extrusion from that face. We also have the option to include or exclude internal face loops and I'm going to exclude them so that when I click on this face it actually omits that hex feature in the center and gives me just a straight cylinder that's exactly the right size. So I made that an inch and a half and now I'm going to continue drawing more features by selecting um, rectangle by center and locking it to the front face of this um, cylinder here. So you can see that this shows me that my sketch is locked to this face. So anything I draw will be on the front face of that cylinder. And I'm just going to pick the silhouette edge of the cylinder to create the center point of my rectangle. And I'll kind of draw it out and then maybe put a dimension to define the height of that. I'll make it 1.375 inches. And if we look at that, that sketch is kind of right on the end of that cylinder. Now, maybe I don't want it right on the end. Maybe I actually want to start my feature offset a little bit. And what's nice about synchronous modeling is we don't have to mess around with defining planes. We can just draw kind of anywhere. And if I expand sketches, you'll see there's sketch one. And it's got a pencil next to it telling me it's active, meaning that anything else I draw will be on that plane and will be added to that sketch. What I can do is I can actually click on that whole sketch in the Pathfinder, and I can use the arrow to move that sketch off that plane. Now, if I start that move now with Live Rules turned on, you'll notice it'll actually want to pull the edge of that, or the front face of that cylinder, to maintain that coplanar relationship with the sketch. In this case, I'm just going to turn that off. You see it highlights in green to show me that it's detected, and that'll let me pull that sketch right off the front face of that cylinder and define an offset, let's say an inch, and a, or a, an eighth of an inch. Now, when I click on the closed region defined by that sketch, it'll start to create in this case a cutout because that sketch intersects the other part. We can actually override that up here by setting it to add and now we're actually adding material. Let's make it half an inch. So we've got some material uh, and the start of our part here. At this point I'm going to hide the previous level and let's imagine that I actually want to create very similar geometry over here where my cursor is to define the other end of this lever. Now rather than drawing, drawing that all up from scratch, the easiest thing to do is to just put a box around the geometry I've created and position my steering wheel somewhere that makes sense, let's say the center of this uh, boss, and then hit the copy command. And what that'll do is when I initiate that move by clicking that lever, it'll copy all that geometry a certain distance, let's say five and a half inches from where I started. Now I can also use the torus to rotate this around so it faces the other way. I'll key in 180 degrees as my rotation. So the other end of the lever is going to look a little different. It's going to be a different size. So we've copied the dimensions and I'll adjust the size with these dimensions. Remember in Solid Edge we have directional control, meaning that we can choose which face we move to accommodate a new dimension. 
In this case, I want to actually move both those faces symmetrically, so I'll select the middle option and key in 0.75 inches. We don't need dimensions all of the time in synchronous. We can actually just click on a part face, and it'll recognize that that's a cylinder with a diameter and allow us to key in a new diameter. Similarly, I can add new dimensions in 3D space whenever I want, just by clicking on two key points and then defining the face that I want to move to accommodate that new dimension. I'll do this over on the other side as well, picking up maybe on the center of that boss and the outer edge of the face, and making sure that I've selected the outer edge of that face, not the boss, as what I want to move when I give that a new dimension. Okay, at this point, I want to create a feature that smoothly connects this face right here to the opposite face over here. And to do that, I'm going to switch into the ordered environment. The ordered environment is a good place to create features that are dependent on others. Ordered is sketch-driven and history-based. So it makes sense that if you've got features that are kind of along for the ride of your initial design, that you do them in ordered. In a lot of other CAD systems, they only give you ordered modeling. And in Solid Edge, because we have access to synchronous and ordered modeling and can combine the two, we can get some really powerful design capability, which we're going to show off a little later in this video. So I'll make a lofted protrusion, which basically picks up, I'll set it to a face here, it'll basically connect this face to this face as a protrusion. Now, the one thing to take note is that you want to line your vectors up correctly when you're making a, a lofted protrusion. You see that if I move my mouse over to this corner, it's going to map that far corner with that green line to this one. And what that'll in fact do is actually twist the um, feature around. I don't want that, so it's just important that I line, match those corners up to define how this lofted protrusion is going to look. The last bit of control I have once I set that is my tangency control. When I select tangent continuous on this edge, you'll see that it actually makes it kind of a smooth flowing edge. I'll do the same thing over on the other side. Okay, so that sort of defines the general shape of my uh, part. The next thing I want to do is remove some material from the interior here. Now, before I do that, I'm going to use the offset surface command to define the base of the cutout uh, of my feature. I'll just offset that interior surface by an eighth of an inch. It'll become apparent why I do this in a second. The next thing I'm going to do is create a sketch on this face. And what I basically want to do is have a cutout that kind of matches this profile but is offset by an eighth of an inch. So I'll use the offset command or the uh, include command and include s and select include with offset. When I pick up on loop as my selection criteria, it'll let me pick up that interior, type in an offset and then create a sketch line that is offset all around an eighth of an inch. So going to the cutout command I'm going to set my selection to select from sketch because I've already got the geometry defined in a sketch and hit the check mark. Now in the extent, remember we could just create a finite depth to this cut but I want to match the bottom face of this cut with that offset surface. So I'm instead going to go to the from to option. The from surface is going to be that front face, and the to surface is going to be that offset surface on the inside there. Now that's different from just defining a linear depth. Uh, the reason is, is when it's just straight, you're not going to see any difference. But if we put a curve into this uh, front face, because that interior face is uh, a matching offset to it, it'll give our cutout a matching curve as well. So let's take a look at how we can now modify our design and combine synchronous with ordered modeling. I'll start by grabbing the two first features I made, the cylinder and that rectangular protrusion in the synchronous model. And I've grabbed them just by hitting control, holding down control and clicking them both. And if I set my steering wheel in the center here, you see I can use the torus to put a bit of an arc on that. And what that's going to do is that's going to put a bit of a curve onto this face. I'll put a 15 degree curve. And you see that the uh, included geometry of that cutout matches that. If we show the rest of our assembly here, what we're going to see is maybe the um, lever is a little too close to this uh, back set here. So what I may want to do now is grab the face set at the back 
and again position my steering wheel somewhere where I get a vector that I want and just walk that back to kind of pull the whole back of that maybe uh, an inch and a half away from where it was. If I keep that selected I can also pull the lever out away from the body of the bike and this is where we're going to get a lot of powerful modeling functionality. You may want to suspend live rules to do this and as I bring this out notice how the curved face of my uh, cutout matches the new curve that I've put into the lever. I'll make that an inch and a half here. So you can see that combining synchronous and ordered modeling we get some really powerful design capabilities that we can execute pretty easily. I'll just refine this a little more by grabbing that back face of the uh, lever over here and walking it in maybe half an inch because it's a little too close. You notice too that I can also pick up on any of these um, dimensions and if I pick the right face that I want to move key in new dimensions for new results. Let's bring that out so we have somewhere to put our foot. I'm going to go back up a level into the uh, assembly and take a look at what I've got. Now the only thing I may have forgotten is that remember we never made a cutout for this lever to fit onto that hexagon um, boss that we see on the motor. So right from the assembly environment I can go into features and I can use like a subtract command for example and that'll basically just subtract any material where the lever intersects in this case the motor which is what I've selected. So when we finish that and select the lever again you can kind of make out that there's a, now a hexagon cut in the center to accommodate that. Similarly I can edit other parts if I switch to the face priority. One thing we may want to do is move this foot peg back a bit away from this uh, starter lever and we'll do that by modifying this bracket here and we can do that right from the assembly environment and the way we do that is we'll just go and well first we'll activate this particular part and then I'm just going to pick up on certain faces. Spacebar will let you pick up on multiple faces and what I'm here is I'm defining just all the faces that I want to move with this geometric edit so I'll grab that as well. Now when we make a synchronous edit using the steering wheel you want to position your steering wheel somewhere uh, on your control point and I'll define a vector just by holding down shift and clicking this center node of my steering wheel and what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to set the vector on a plane here and I can key in a degree or I can reach over and just grab another uh, key point of that part. So if I click on you know this circular edge here that's defined a straight linear vector between where I am and this other piece here and that gives me the direction I want to modify this part in. Now at this point you may want to turn live rules back on and reset it because there's a lot of geometric conditions we want solid edge to maintain and when I start to execute that move we'll see that it's modifying that bracket to move that peg back and I'll move it back by an inch just to give us a little more clearance so again using those synchronous commands we can access uh, and make changes right from the top level assembly but really the power in solid edge is combining that ordered and synchronous modeling to get the kind of results we've got here